and welcome to the Conveyor System Design for Maximum Advanced webinar. Uh, today's presenter will be Dean Workman, Robin Vice President of Conveyor Systems. I am Desiree Willis, also from Robbins, and I'll be moderating the questions throughout the presentation and also the Q&A session at the end. Uh, for those interested, there will be an archive recording of this presentation available on tunnelingjournal.webex.com. And with that, I'll turn it over to Dean. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, or it may not be morning in the, the part of the world that you're in. My name is Dean Wordman. I'm Vice President of Bell Conveyor Systems for the Robbins Company. I've got about 28 years experience working on Bell Conveyor Systems. And we'd like to give you a presentation today uh, in regard to conveyors. A lot of information that we will be covering and uh, Please bear with me. I, I've had a lot of experience with belt conveyors, but by no means am I a professional presenter. But we will try to uh, to go through all the information, give you some insight into belt conveyor systems and their advantages, and we will answer any, uh, all questions at, at a later time, as we said before. Please remember when you're submitting sending questions to hit the submit button. The, the, the first slide uh, and the, the name of the presentation is Conveyor Design for Fast Advance. Uh, the picture that is shown here is the ESAC Access Conveyor System that was used in New York City for boring twin bore. I'll give you some more details on that project at, uh, further in the presentation. The, one of the things that the Robbins Company and in tunneling conveyors uh, particularly, you, you will see that we'll use all of the different types of belt conveyor systems that are available. Uh, these types of conveyors are vertical, horizontal, overland, uh, stacker conveyors. Some of the things that we will try to touch on are the advancements that optimize the efficiency of the conveyors, conveyors that are used in urban environments, and uh, we're recently starting to use conveyors in soft ground applications behind the EPP machine. Then we will have a short question and answer session. Now we have a poll question. And uh, if you can, just take a moment and uh, and to answer the, uh, the question, please. Please remember to hit submit. And while you're doing those, uh, we will move on to the next slide. And as I touched on briefly before, the different types of conveyors that we have are horizontal. vertical overland and stacking conveyors. At Robbins, we, we offer all of these different types of conveyors and the integration of these conveyors into a complete system along with the funnel boarding machine itself. One of the things that has been proven and you probably all well know is that the conveyor is like a chain. All, all of the links have to be intact in order for you to take material from the face and discharge it in the mud pile. If any one of the conveyors is not operational, then the mining process is, is shut down. Okay, we see that uh, we've got a 
our group today is about 50-50. 50% have been involved, 49% uh, have been involved, 51% not involved. So uh, I, I'll try to touch on uh, on the more technical aspects, but also to give you an understanding of the actual components that are used here. Uh, what we have on this slide, we are showing a uh, typical extensible conveyor for TBM applications. And here you can see, as we have shown, the main drive is used initially to supply power to move the conveyor belt. The belt storage cassette serves two purposes. It allow, maintains the tension on the belt so that uh, the main drive can then supply the power to the system. It also stores the belt and allows the, T, the TBM to advance and pull belt out of this unit. The splice band, it, it's not titled here, but the splice band is located here. This is where the belt is added into the system. The booster drive is a means of adding power into the conveyor system. It allows you to use a lower strength belting and allows you to balance the tension through the curves. The advancing tailpiece is located on the backup of the TBM. And this basically just splits the belt apart and allows you to build the conveyor while you're mining. Directly in front of the advancing tailpiece, between the advancing tailpiece and the TBM, the structure, the belt structure for the system will be installed. And this structure is made up of the return roll, side rails, knee brace. The knee brace supports the side rails. This is assembled directly in front of the advancing tailpiece. Then as the advancing tailpiece moves forward over top of the mounting brackets for the carrying idlers, the carrying idlers are then installed. This allows you to build the system while you're mining. The only time the system has to be shut down is when the belt storage unit is exhausted of belting and you have to add belt into the system. Another component of the conveyor system is the vertical conveyor. What is shown in this slide is the head section of the vertical conveyor. This is an S-type conveyor that is shown in this slide. This unit would be located on the surface. Uh, the drive pulley assembly is located at the head, that would be uh, it is also the discharge pulley. You have the power unit, can be a single or can be a dual power unit, one on each side of the drive pulley. This is all is your head frame. These are modular units, uh, fabricated structural steel components so that they can be shipped and assembled easily. The belting that is shown here is, is a pocket belt type system. At the Robbins Company, we offer two types of vertical conveyors. The head section that we were just showing is the for the S type conveyor. This type of conveyor has been used traditionally for a number of years around the world for taking material out of shafts. This type of conveyor 
requires belting that is cross rigid. And when I mean cross rigid, it, 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 it is rigid uh, laterally. When you take the belt on the downturn bend, which is right here, the belt is only supported on the belt edges. That's why you have to have cross rigid belting. It is also on the upturn bend, as I'm showing. Uh, I have the cursor here on the upturn, downturn. The belt is only supported on the edges, so you require cross rigid belting. This type of system also takes up more space in the shaft. At Robbins, we we designed and supplied six of the what we refer to as the J type belt vertical belt conveyors. And as you can see, this type of conveyor is loaded on the vertical portion, material receiving area right here. We load it as it's going vertically. And then we discharge the material here. This type of system has a much smaller footprint, takes up less room in the shaft, and does not require cross-rigid belting. That uh, gives us several advantages. One main advantage is that it takes up much less room in the shaft. Uh, the other is that it does not require cross-rigid belting, which cross-rigid belting is designed and manufactured specifically for the application, uh, the capacity and lift dictates the size of the belting. So that type belting is not readily available should you have damage or catastrophic failure of the belt, and it is more difficult to repair cross rigid belting. The belting that we use on the J type vertical conveyor is standard fabric or steel cable belt, depending upon the application. This belting is readily available and can be repaired very easily. There has been a number of advancements through the years in belt conveyor systems uh, to allow them to maintain optimal efficiency. I'll try to touch on a few of those things now. I think one of the things is, is belt conveyors have proven themselves over the years. They have proven themselves to be very efficient, very reliable. Uh, and they have proven to, in, in longer tunnels uh, over muck cars, the conveyors have allowed us to achieve records that would have not been uh, even thought of 15 or 20 years ago. Uh, some of the advantages of the conveyors are higher system availability, improved safety, and it improves the air quality in the tunnel. By not, you, you don't require the mug train to be running in and out of the tunnel with the, the diesel fuel that would be there. Also allows your uh, ventilation system to be smaller. The picture that we're showing here uh, is the uh, Aramata project, which was in Sydney, Australia. We had 24 systems located all of the, uh, the main drive supply stand and storage unit was located on the surface. So you can see each one of the conveyors coming up. Locating the, the systems on the surface uh, has a number of advantages. One is it's easier to install equipment on the surface, and then it's easier to get people there to make service the belt as well. Okay, we've come to another poll question. If you would, please uh, please read the question and uh, then uh, remember to hit submit once you have uh, answered the question. And Dean, we already have one question um, while people are answering. What are okay. some typical conveyor system availabilities from your recent projects? 
What was the question? Sorry. What are some 